All right. Well, uh, normally I would say welcome back to Waste Some Time with Jason Green, but uh, this is a little bit uh, of a different occasion. Uh, when I started this show, uh, I asked some of my friends to come on and have a nice discussion and a nice chat. And one of the people uh, who came on early on was Steve Riley uh, of LA Guns and Wasp, among other bands. And um, uh, Steve uh, was very generous with his time and was very nice. And uh, I knew by doing this show that at some point uh, somebody would uh, pass away. Uh, uh, that's life. It does happen. I did not expect it to be Steve Riley or someone that I cared about. Uh, and so uh, here we are. Um, as of yesterday, uh, uh, Steve had passed. Now, I didn't want to uh, report this uh, uh, first or anything like that. And I didn't want to speak out of uh, turn. But it, it, this story is uh, it, it is sort of uh, developing now. Um, and it's on uh, uh, Metal Sludge, and, and I'm sure from there it'll be on other places. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, I really like Steve. There's a lot of people uh, that I interview who are just acquaintances, and then they go their own way, so to speak, uh, where Steve, uh, we were obviously very much in touch. Um, one of the reasons was that he wanted to put together his band uh, and I recommended a singer to him named Kurt Frolic and uh, and Kurt wasn't a Phil clone by any means very different they wanted to do original music and they did and Steve was very proud of that I was reading through our text messages yesterday and he was so happy with Kurt and the way that his band was going it wasn't uh, it was different but he was really happy and really excited about the new music. And he also told me uh, in, in our second interview that he really wanted to get it uh, done. Um, even though the record wasn't out, it's still not out. It'll be out soon. The single for Dark Horse is out. I'm not saying this as shameless promotion. I'm saying it is because Steve would want you to listen to it. He put a lot of labor and a lot of love into it. So, um, so uh, anyway, so we should all listen to it, and hopefully, that album comes out soon, in memory of Steve Riley. Uh, so he went, but I got the sense that he wasn't well, and he told me he wasn't well, and that he had been seeing doctors and things. He never told me exactly what was wrong, and I'm not going to speculate right now here, and that's not for me to do. Um, so he, uh, but he he ha he has passed. And uh, his, he, you know, this is a man who was a piece of public figure, but he also has uh, a lot of family and friends and fans um, who were probably, uh, you know, shocked this morning, um, as I was as well. Uh, it was a long night. I'm here in uh, Jackpot, Nevada, where it's, we're in the middle of nowhere, it's 20 degrees, um, and got the news. Um, I wanted to wait until a, uh, a, a site or somebody uh, ran with it. And that would be, uh, as like I said, right now, uh, at this point, it's on Metal Sludge. And I'm sure it'll be everywhere. But um, he, was, uh, uh, he was very kind uh, to me. And he was very happy with that I got um, him Kurt for his band. And, uh, and we'd stayed in touch. And he always told me how happy he was. He wanted to do this track-by-track track interview. It's on YouTube. It's called right now. It's called the final interview, because I believe it's the last interview he ever did. It was important to him um, to do it. It was important to him to do it. And I'll, I'll answer some of your comments and questions and things in just a minute. But this is really about Steve and not about the other things in my life or the show. Um, but we, we can talk a little bit about Steve Riley and your memories of him, um, as well as a few of mine. But um, like I said, he really wanted to do that track by track. He wanted to promote that record. Um, we were scheduled to do it in person, and he wasn't feeling well, and uh, he had Kelly Nichols do it. And he was really happy to have Kelly promote it. 
And uh, so we did that in person. Steve came in at the end and said hello. Um, but it was, uh, and we had a good conversation. And uh, he was very, despite the battles that he had with the members of LA Guns, legal, all these drama, I don't really want to get into that too much. But he, um, he wanted to see past it. He didn't want to be uh, bad. He didn't want to badmouth those guys. He tried really hard not to. He wanted to take the high road. I felt like sometimes some of his former bandmates said some terrible things, and maybe uh, uh, he, he didn't want to bite, and he didn't. He refused to uh, attack them back negatively, and uh, and I would hope that his former bandmates and friends would take this moment to be classy. Sometimes I think that's asking for a lot in this business, but maybe, just maybe, they could take a minute to realize that life and death is much more important than any music drama that you could have. I recently made up with Phil Lewis. Phil Lewis and I definitely had some issues. It was one of the reasons why I was so gung-ho to get Steve a singer. Um, so... Anyway, uh, it's, like I say, it's a somber morning. It's not something you want to talk about. And it also takes a lot of uh, thought on whether or not I, I do this. Um, this is not about my channel. You know, uh, this is about Steve and remembering him. It may be for some of you hearing it from somebody uh, who knew him. Uh, I wouldn't say we were best friends, but somebody who knew him and had great memories to share. Back in the day, when we had the band called Sin City Sinners in Las Vegas, um, I worked with Brent Muscat at Faster Pussycat. Brent was in LA Guns with Steve, and uh, might be the first time I, one of the times I met Brent. But uh, there was a good lineup. It was Phil Lewis, Tracy Gunn, Steve Riley, uh, uh, Muddy Muddy on bass. He was kind of probably forgotten now, and Steve on drums. Anyway, uh, and Brent played in a bunch of different lineups of LA Guns, and that's how I first met Steve. He seemed very level-headed um, to me, and I know that he was the business person behind LA Guns for a lot of years, from collecting the money to negotiating the contract, uh, uh, yeah, no, advancing, I should say. He did it. I think he even drove the van a lot. I mean, he did whatever it took. Members of his band, Scotty Griffin, uh, had told me that uh, if it wasn't for Steve Riley, Phil Lewis said this at one point too, the Ailey Guns brand might not have existed. Tracy went on to do other projects. And while he did those other projects, Steve Riley kept LA Guns going. I'm not going to get into um, any of the negativity and the partnership agreements and those things. It's not about today. People can remember those things another time. But for today, um, again, it's about um, remembering Steve Riley, uh, who passed away, I believe he was 67, I'm not positive, I, uh, a lot happening at once in my mind and probably in the mind of a lot of other people. Um, so we had the idea to bring him in to do Sin City Centers as a guest and he came to a place called the Dive Bar he played and we got along well and he told me he wanted to do more of those type of things and more Vegas uh, gigs and, uh, and we, we began a bunch and then I reunited him with Randy Piper and we did a night of wasp and it was a lot of fun uh and Rand, uh, randy and uh, steve they had a really good time and we're hoping that maybe one day wasp would uh ask them to to come back uh, and maybe do blackie that is and ask them to do something it never was to happen and now you'll never see that line of tony richards uh, very doubtful would ever come back as well or be asked so we did those and we did a few more and I, over the years I'd seen the different versions of LA Guns, stayed in touch with Steve, as I mentioned, help him uh, put together his lineup uh, for his band. Uh, Kelly Nichols has been on the show. Uh, on the anniversary of The Last Command, we did an extensive interview. I'll link these things in the descriptions. Again, not to promote myself, but it's a great way to hear from Steve. Uh, uh, I'll talk about some subjects that he probably hadn't talked about before. He really enjoyed that interview. That's the was one of the better compliments I, I've received. He really was happy with it. And uh, the people at Golden Robot Records who are going to distribute 
the record. They were um, they liked it as well and became sponsors of this show. Um, so uh, it's sad. So excuse me. Excuse me for broadcasting from my hotel room in Jackpot. And also this terrible lighting, but uh, I felt it was important to say these things while they were in my mind. Uh, um, and I had a, some time to sleep on this uh, as well. And uh, trying to figure out a little better angle. But, um, so we did the, the, the final interview. We talked about his health a little bit, as I mentioned. And we talked about this record track by track. I, I've heard the record. I'm one of the only people who, who's heard it so far. Uh, and, and it's good. You'll, you'll enjoy it. But it'll take some time, I think, now to come out. And I, again, there has not been a, a formal announcement uh, from his family. And I'm sure that will be coming very soon. Again, th uh, this, uh, uh, to our knowledge, happened yesterday. Uh, so, uh, and again, it is now making the, the ways through the, the media, if you will. So, uh, as I was saying, I, I enjoyed t dealing with Steve. I enjoyed talking to him. I enjoyed hearing his voice. Everybody has a Steve Riley impression. I don't do it very well, but uh, <laughs> it's a thick Boston accent. And you say Buds a lot. Hey, Buds. I'm, I can't do it right now, but uh, you can hear it in your heads. And if you go watch that interview, uh, you can spend a little time with Steve. You will see in the last interview, he doesn't look well. And he uh, wasn't. I did message Chris Holmes this morning. Uh, uh, someone that's mentioned it in the comments. I did mention him. They were friends. Steve really loved him. Uh, obviously, they played together in Wasp. And for a short time, Chris Holmes was actually in LA Guns. Very short time. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I was honored that Steve wanted me to do that interview. It was very important to him, as I said. And this is not a stroke on my uh, ego. Uh, but it's true. He was very, he was excited by it. He wanted it. And he wanted somebody who would tell his story. And I stayed fair to his story. Um, it was, we didn't do a mud slinging piece. So again, uh, and for those of you who are just tuning in because this is live, a lot of you will watch this later on, a, excuse me, earthquake, on a, a tape, as they say. Uh, Steve Riley, uh, uh, dead at 67. Um, we start to lose our heroes in this industry. It's very sad. Um, uh, we lose everybody in life. Uh, uh, you know, that the only guarantee is that uh, we're not going to get out of this and we hope to stay as long as we can. Steve Riley left quite a legacy. Uh, and, uh, and he'll be remembered for it. And today, Listen to a little of his music. Listen to a little L.A. Guns. Listen to some Wasp. Uh, and, uh, and some of the various things that he has done. Check out our interview. You know, maybe it's a little sad right now, but at some point you will, uh, maybe you'll enjoy it. And a little last chance to spend some time. Or, uh, I, I wouldn't call it a waste of time. Uh, that's just a silly show name. The interview, the first one is 90 minutes. And uh, so there's a lot. But uh, again... Today is about remembering uh, Steve Riley. Um, when I say on this show that you should go out and see the bands you love, this is a prime example of why you should. Support these bands, see them while you can. Uh, uh, nobody gets out at the end. Uh, let's tell people uh, uh, that, we, that we love them, that we're fans, all those things. Never take it for granted. Don't be the person who's too cool. A lot of people are too cool to tell you that they're a fan. It's okay to be a fan. It's okay to care about uh, people and to care about your favorite musicians. Uh, and most of them are happy to hear it, that they meant something to you uh, as they, uh, as that's what happens. So uh, I could tell Steve stories for quite some time, uh, but I'm not going to do that this morning. Um, let's, we'll let this news uh, uh, sit in, but uh, I'm so uh, thankful for the, the time that I got to, to know him. And uh, I never ended up working with him. There was some talk about it. Um, sometimes you keep your friends better when you don't work with them so much. 
lot of people are asking about um, cause of death and health issues. And those aren't for me um, to say. I've only heard certain things and I would rather let his family make a formal statement when they're ready. Um, he was suffering uh, um, through some severe back pains and back surgeries. Now that's not going to be a cause, but uh, he was really in a bad way. Uh, he was on a cane and, and uh, uh, he was with his wife. She was helping him on stage at the end. And, uh, and so again, this is for her and his son Cole and his, his bandmates and friends. This is for them to really uh, 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 to remember him and to their announcement. Uh, this is not clickbait. It's a way to deal with feelings. Um, as I said, when I started this show, it was a way to sort of chat with people. And at first, the only people I could get were people I already knew. No one was going to give me a chance, but Steve did. And for a while, Steve didn't do a lot of interviews. So it was nice that he was willing to do mine. Um, and uh, so it, 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 I apologize for the stuttering and all the ums, and I, I do them anyway. But what people liked about this show is that I've been pretty much real, transparent. It's not fun <laughs> to sit here in front of a camera like, with the sunlight in my face. And But I wanted to share real experiences. When I was diagnosed with skin cancer, I first thing I thought to do was come on here um, when I would do my live shows. I talk about my life and um, because of my involvement with Steve Riley several times, uh, uh, um, a lot of times, and conversations, I thought that it would be fitting to talk about it with you, the audience. Um, there's so many stories about Steve, but rather than have me sit here and attempt to tell them, watch those YouTube interviews. Um, if you want to hear more and remember Steve today, it's one way to do it because we really did get uh, uh, deep um, uh, into the uh, his career and all aspects of it. There was so much stuff. He, he'd been playing music for a long time and he was in Steppenwolf and all kinds of other stuff. His first band, I think it's called Bees. Again, it's all in there and this is all new to me. A lot of people saying that they regretted not being able to see him. And uh, Make sure you see your, your heroes. I kept saying over the last 20 years, I want to go see Jimmy Buffett. I wasn't the biggest Jimmy Buffett fan, but he seemed like he'd be a lot of fun. And uh, uh, Michelle and I forced ourselves to go. And it was fantastic. It was really great. And it turned out to be one of his last concerts. Um, so support these bands and support these people, as I said, and, uh, and don't wait. None of us, uh, uh, you know, enjoy life. I try my best. I will tell you that, uh, even though I'm sitting here in jackpot, Nevada, uh, um, with, with Stephen Pierce, of course, who another person, uh, who I admire and I'm so fortunate to work with, but as you get older, you realize this can't go on. Uh, uh, forever. And so I know this is a lot of running around. It's difficult to prepare a statement. Um, that last interview was so important that I do it with Steve. He wanted to talk about that record track by track, even though the record he knew was going to be delayed and not released right away. Didn't even know if it would be released, to be honest, but he wanted to talk about it. Um, I stayed over while Steve and the band played Las Vegas one night. They had a night off. They flew to St. Louis. I stayed behind to see Riley's LA Guns and to do that interview that, I, as I said, ultimately he wasn't able to do. Kelly Nichols did it. Um, and I saw Steve and I was worried. I was concerned. And I asked him about it. And he was battling things, but you expected him to make it. You know, uh, wasn't really thinking that the, this morning would come. So, uh, and it, it was a really fun show. And I was glad that I stayed behind and did it. It was tough for me. I never want to miss uh, a gig with Stephen uh, Piercy. I, I don't, I never want to miss. Uh, and I didn't miss a gig, I just missed a travel day. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of people are saying nice things, but more people who are in a little bit of shock. And by the end of the day, this will make its way through all the 
uh, rock and roll uh, uh, rounds, if you will. I, I wish I would have shared some photos, but I wanted to. Uh, I wanted to get this uh, uh, up uh, fast and 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 out, and while it's still raw. And again, uh, uh, I wanted to wait until this was on a. Uh, it was already on a source. I didn't want to be the first person um, to say it. Uh, and uh, as I've said, I wasn't best friends with Steve Riley, uh, but we had some nice conversations, private conversations. And I, I was reading through some of our text messages yesterday, and he was very grateful. He was grateful um, that, I, that I helped promote Riley's Elegance. I joked that they were a spite band, that if the other band wasn't so cruel sometimes or, or, or quick to comment, maybe they would have just went away. But then there was a lot of fans who enjoyed the original music they made. Uh, uh, the first record, I think it's called Renegades. I feel terrible that I'm just waking up. Uh, uh, it's a good album. Uh, anyway, it did well. And he was doing this because he loved it. Um, it wasn't a way to uh, make a make a, a full-time living. Him and Kelly, they both did it because they loved it. And I think they would have liked to have been included in, uh, in LA Guns. And I think it would have been nice if for one more time, the fans um, would have gotten that. So, uh, uh, I don't, if somebody says death comes in threes, I don't believe that. I never have. It's a silly thing because you can just keep counting threes. Three people die, one, two, three. Next people die, you start over again. Well, why can't they be four, five, six? Why do they have to be one, two, three? So death doesn't come in threes. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, death doesn't uh, discriminate. It doesn't doesn't work that way. But um, uh, anyway, it, it's incredibly sad. And most of the people commenting, uh, I'm trying to read them, are, uh, uh, are saying nice things and uh, about Steve and about my decision to do this. Somebody will probably say it's in poor taste, but uh, uh, I don't really do things because of, based on what other people think. I think Steve would have been okay with it. And in fact, I know he would have. I know Steve would have liked um, people taking the time to talk about him and remember him uh, and, and say some kind things. He's had some career. Like I said, go back and listen to the, uh, from the second Wasp album, uh, uh, that's when I recommend it. Uh, listen to Last Command. Listen to uh, uh, Cocked and Loaded On with LA Guns. If you're really looking to listen to Steve, you want to you want to go uh, to the second album, so the sophomore, I think is the term. I don't know if that's correct. Uh, of all these bands. Um, anyway, uh, and a lot of people are saying that they're glad to have heard it from me. I, I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. It's uh, only 9 a.m. here in Jackpot, Nevada. So we're just waking up on the East Coast. It's noon now. Um, but uh, I'm trying to read your comments. Uh, I, I'm, again, I'm also trying not to make this about me or my show because this is a bigger, uh, a bigger moment. And again, I know People are tuning in, but a lot of people are surprised because this is a live video. Uh, but again, Steve Riley of LA Guns and Wasp uh, has passed away yesterday at 67. There'll be more online. You can go, uh, go, you can go to Metal Sledge now, I believe, and, and read a little bit more detail. Uh, and for otherwise, it's for his family um, to, to, to do the rest. Um, Again, I don't think it was in bad taste because it's out there, and because I uh, uh, I, I liked Steve and wanted to spend a little bit of time um, talking about him and encouraging you to remember him today, and also to check out the uh, uh, th those interviews to, to to spend a little time with with Steve. It, it was strange when I found out yesterday. I told Stephen Piercy. And uh, uh, I appreciate the uh, super chat. I won't highlight that right now, but thank you. And the comment of the, that goes with it is you're being very respectful. Thank you. Yeah. 
and and a lot of people, uh, Rebecca, saying that she's been crushed. I've been a fan of Steve since I was 12 years old. The only LA guns to me is his LA guns. And I love you, Steve. Too young, way too young. And here's the truth. Uh, Joey says condolences to his families. Uh, his family, excuse me. Uh, I don't try to act uh, too cool. And uh, I love saying I'm a class act. Well, thank you. Um, but I don't try to be uh, too cool. It's, it's raw. And as things happen in life, we get to talk about it uh, together. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I, Marshall's comment says, thanks for letting us know, Jason. We consider you a friend. It means something hearing that sad news from you. Uh, I uh, understand. I, I feel the same way. I would rather hear it from somebody I liked. When I was a young person, I listened to Howard Stern. Uh, and I would, would rather hear it from somebody that I listened to so often. And uh, so um, these are the moments that we share. And uh, as we grow up, the bands that we listen to, people get older, people get sick. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned the Wasp al live album. Uh, he was proud of that. And I know a lot of people like that record as well. Um, and we start to lose uh, uh, people in our lives. So we talk about it. It's a human emotion. And then we uh, remember them. And we try to make sure that our own lives are lived as full as we can. Uh, some people don't like when you talk like that. They think you sound like a fortune cookie. But uh, sometimes it, 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 everyone has their own way of handling things. I think go out and do something. If you were thinking about putting things off, don't. Try them. Uh, uh, live. Take that trip you've been talking about. And, uh, you know, other people think it's cliche to tell your friends that you love them. But you should. Especially people you've been out of touch with. This is a great time to uh, 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 reconcile. Uh, nothing wrong with uh, uh, um, a few comments about whether or not the other members of LA Guns have commented. I don't know and I don't think so. Uh, I believe that this announcement is very fresh and uh, I don't think so. And if they do, I would hope that they will co comment with respect. Listen, I, I mean, I, they may have reasons to have not like Steve. That's fine. But this is not the time to talk about it. Um, uh, driving with wheels, Keith says, rest in peace, Steve. Thank you for being so real all the time, Jason. Well, thank you. Uh, again, I appreciate all of you. I appreciate you for watching the show and keeping this thing going. Uh, but it, this is a real moment. There's been other people who've passed away that I thought maybe I should do a show. But they weren't people that I was that close to. I did find out about Jeff Labar passing right before we went. I also knew Jeff. I knew Steve much better. Um, and uh, But other than that, I tried not to. Uh, I, 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 that, that's what it's about. But in this case, you know, uh, you can't be a fan of everybody. But Steve, I was. Uh, um, let's see. I'm just trying to read some of your comments as well. Uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so as I said, uh, it's been unfortunate. I've had to deliver eulogies in my life. Uh, it's not something you want to do. And obviously this is not a eulogy, but talking about a real situation, I know uh, uh, Michelle was very upset. I'll tell you one of the ways that uh, uh, Michelle and I first became, uh, well, how we first met, met I, she went to see Riley's LA Guns. And I said, if anyone's crazy enough to be solely a Riley's LA Guns fan, they're, they're gonna love me because uh, I helped put that band together. I was being, uh, being silly. And, uh, um, and so she was fortunate to have met Steve with me and spent a little time with him and he was so nice to her. And uh, it was pretty much nice to everyone that he came in contact, especially in the later years in his life. Earlier on, he was a little bit of a recluse. You didn't always see uh, uh, Steve Riley. Um, I have a lot of great pictures to share the, back home in Las Vegas. I mean, actual pictures. And I'll do that 
and I'll post some other memories and I'll post um, some other things. And uh, again, I, and I, I appreciate everyone's kind words. And, and he was not my, uh, I don't want people to think that Steve Riley was my best friend. I'm not saying that. He was somebody that I worked with. He was somebody that um, we talked a lot about the inside stuff. There's a lot of times he told me things not to tell other people what they were working on. And, and I kept those secrets. And, uh, and he was a person that I liked. And a person that uh, I know a lot of people in the audience liked as well. Um, so I'm not trying to make this about me. And for those who, who, if anyone has a negative opinion, that's okay too. Yeah, um, it's going to happen. Um, wow, we've been talking for 30 minutes. It's crazy. Um, talking about uh, people you care about. It, it, it's, it's important, I suppose. Um, a lot of people saying nice words about me. I, I, I won't highlight them uh, because it's about Steve. But a lot of people saying uh, thank you for delivering the news. And uh, and yes, and if there are people who are Googling, uh, it'll take you a little bit of time, but it will be out there uh, everywhere. And hopefully you know, people aren't going to be mad. But like I said, um, it is on uh, Metal Sludge now. Um, and it, 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 when someone passes away, it is public news. Uh, and I'm sorry, I see a lot of people saying how hard this hits them. Steve was pretty, uh, I think people expected him to be around. I mean, he, 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 uh, he looked uh, like he'd been through a lot and he always looked like he'd always, he'd be around. Um, so, so if it does, and when we lose the people we like, it does feel like you lost a friend. There's some people who go, oh, who cares if someone famous passes away or whatever the case. But uh, we, we, we grew up listening to these people and seeing them. I saw LA Guns play Madison Square Garden open for ACDC. You know, uh, I see some people naming other, this isn't the, uh, uh, this isn't the, the Grim Reaper hour where I come on and tell you every time someone passed. Um, I chose to talk about Steve because I knew him and because of what I believe is his final interview is on this channel. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm glad that the audience, uh, you guys are getting to chat amongst yourselves as well. Uh, sometimes when these things happen, it's nice to talk to other people, uh, and, and they say you always remember where you were when you hear these kind of things, and uh, and yeah, I and mean, I'll always remember the uh, uh, this one. But I'm also going to choose to remember uh, uh, the Steve that I knew, and uh, through the the music, and uh, yeah, and I, I thank you for the for those. I've chosen not to highlight comments right now, but for those who are, are, are thankful that they got to hear it from me, uh, um, that's good. It's maybe it's better than hearing it, just reading um, the details uh, and these headlines about uh, death. Of, you know, I think sometimes seeing it on social media uh, 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 hurts a, a little bit or desensitizes it, or we've, it's so negative. And while this is a sad occasion. You know, uh, 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 it, remembering Steve is a good thing. So let's listen to uh, some of his music. He was proud of that Renegades record by L.A. Guns. It doesn't sound like L.A. Guns that you know, but listen to it because he was proud of it. Listen to the single, The Dark Horse. He wanted you to hear it. Kelly Nichols uh, also. And I, I, I don't know what the future is. It's silly to even speculate. Uh, I don't think there's going to be a Kelly's, Kelly's Elegance, but maybe they will play some of those new songs and have somebody sit in. It sounds crazy, but I think that that band would like to remember Steve probably in that music. It's also probably too soon. I saw someone ask about Scotty Griffin, who's a good friend of mine. I did text him. Uh, I didn't hear back, but he's known him a long time. He played in a lot of different versions of Elegance with Steve being a constant. And so I could also tell you that we were supposed to do a show with them next year. We had a date 
I won't say where uh, because it's, but we had a date, Stephen Piercy's band and Steve Riley. And I was looking forward to seeing them and looking forward to seeing uh, uh, my buddies in that band. And uh, uh, and so one of the first things I thought is this is off. I hope that uh, Golden Robot will release the record soon. It's called The Dark Horse. And uh, I'm gonna listen to it today. I, uh, I'm one of the only people, as I said, who has it now, not to boast, but, uh, but, uh, uh, and, and they'll be out soon. First time I met Steve, I was a fan. I was in high school and I waited outside a hotel called the St. Moritz in Manhattan and uh, get my LA Guns record signed. It was just a young, long time ago. Jody Foster was staying at the hotel next door and she was with a young woman holding hands and she was obviously, she's out now. But back then she was quiet, but she was very nice. I remember that, uh, not to take away from Steve's discussion but uh, anyway uh, that's the first time i met all of the la guns guys and i've gotten to know them all since and uh to tell them those uh stories that they enjoy that that, that, I, that i'm a fan and i'm still a fan and i'm proud when i started this show i wasn't sure if i was going to talk about you know the the fan things i did um but then i realized that's the most real thing that you could possibly do in no way am i ashamed that I cared about meeting my favorite musicians. And I'm, I'm so grateful that I have the pictures and that I have the stories that go with that. And so it, it's still strange to me, but whenever somebody uh, wants to talk to me at a show or take a picture, or whatever, uh, uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for every second because I wanted to meet everybody. And for those of you who follow me on social media and stuff, you'll see that I, I have pretty much met um, everybody. So I'm not going to go on too much longer. Um, I just want to make sure I didn't miss any of your comments, but uh, I thank you guys for tuning in and spending a little time with me to remember Steve Riley. I do encourage you to watch those interviews. I, I will put the links in the description. I haven't done that yet. This is all very new. I didn't even know what um, I was going to do about this, but they'll be in there and, and watch them, enjoy them. And, and Steve wanted you to see them. It was very important to me. I held the interview back, I'll be honest with you. I sat on it for a while because the record wasn't out. And I thought, why release an interview talking track by track of a record you can't hear? But he wanted it out. I think he knew he wasn't well. Um, so uh, thank you, Jason, for sharing your fan stories with us. It just makes you, sorry, uh, uh, so... Relatable, you're my favorite podcaster, best interview. So, well, thank you so much. I, it's hard to keep up, but that was Rebecca. Thank you. And yes, I. Uh, it's supposed to be real. The days when, when I was younger, I auditioned to be an MTV VJ, all these kind of things. And maybe I didn't have the look or the shtick that they wanted. But now with things like YouTube, the audience decides who they want uh, uh, to, to hear and see. And based on the numbers, you guys seem to enjoy this. So uh, not this particular episode, but the other one. So that's why I'm glad to be here with you and share some hard times too. And a lot of people are sad. I'm reading the comments. Uh, 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 I'm, you know, I, it is sad and it's hard. And uh, um, yeah, a lot of people are saying that Steve was kind and fair and uh, Horrible news, yeah. All these things are true. Um, I will come back uh, um, and do my regular show. I think I have a tour diary coming out. I'm not trying to do advertising. I'm just trying to remember. Uh, I think in one hour. Well, now, it, 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 20 minutes right after this, there's a tour diary. It seems uh, silly uh, now. Uh, to laugh at, at the dumb things we do on the road in retrospect. But um, anyway, it's already, it's already programmed and it cannot be stopped. Uh, it's about uh, Hannibal, Missouri, Mark Twain's uh, old stomping grounds. So uh, anyway, that's there. And then I'll be live again Wednesday. If you're new to the channel, we do this three days a week. These aren't commercials, but just letting you know I, 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 that we'll be back and we'll talk more about Steve and we'll talk more about all our other favorite artists. We'll have interviews with our favorite artists uh, and enjoy that time. I, I thank you all 
for tuning in on what is not uh, the happiest of occasions. Um, very sad. Again, uh, Steve Riley has passed at the age of 67. Um, people say all the time, uh, um, want to wish respect and prayers and things to the family and friends and fans, but it is true. Um, this is a time uh, I, I decided to do this, but it's completely out of respect to his loved ones and to his memories. I, I hope you guys will have a great day, and I hope you guys will uh, remember Steve Riley, listen to his music, remember all your heroes, uh, uh, and uh, and thank you for the nice words to me. Uh, on the next show, you guys can uh, you guys can all say uh, nice things about me for as long as you like, and I, <laughs> I will accept it. But for now, uh, again, a rest in peace, Steve Riley. Uh, it was a uh, it was a pleasure knowing you and, and, and uh, working and, uh, on these different things. And, and, uh, and uh, yes, uh, Chris, I'll let you have the last word and that uh, Steve would appreciate this. I, I think he would, too. I think he would not want to. Uh, I think he would want people to know. So, again, as I was saying, rest in peace. I hope you all have a, as good a weekend as you can. And, I get, again, listen to some uh, good music today. Okay. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll chat again uh, under better circumstances.